So uh, my name is Pasha. Uh, I uh, work in Google Memory Management Team. And uh, I'll talk about uh, dynamic kernel stacks. Uh, basically, uh, the problem, uh, one of the proposed solutions that uh, I sent uh, several weeks ago, also the problem with that solution. And, uh, and then uh, I'd like to discuss about um, uh, how to go forward. What can we do? So uh, kernel stacks um, are basically uh, every single uh, user process uh, uh, has an associated uh, kernel stack. And um, also, we have uh, kernel threads, which uh, also have their own kernel stacks. And for a long time, they were eight kilobytes. And uh, that was uh, sufficient. Um, and it is still eight kilobytes uh, in uh, some organizations and uh, on some architectures, it's still eight kilobytes. But uh, on x86 in mainline kernel, we changed it to uh, 16 kilobytes. So um, our threads become, became heavier. And uh, the reason, at least uh, in the original submission, uh, the reason why it was uh, um, changed because we were getting some uh, overflows with the um, KVM. And uh, I think that also with the fuse file system, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, but anyway, uh, it, it is uh, the the, the uh, stacks become heavier, like we, uh, we use more memory. And uh, the reason we use more memory is because um, we, uh, the I.O. is getting more uh, complex. Uh, we have BPF programs attached. We have performance uh, events handling on the stack. Uh, we have some uh, compiler optimizations that like to in, in, inline code and create uh, very large frames. We um, uh, we also have more code, deeper calls, and, and so on. So over time, uh, we use more stack. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, we at Google are planning to increase the stack to 16 kilobyte as well, because it's, um, it, it's, it's getting harder and harder to qualify new workload and new kernels on uh, 8K stacks. So, uh, but the increase is, is very expensive for us be because of the size of our fleet. And uh, so it, uh, it, it means that uh, uh, we, 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 we might use uh, like petabytes of data. Uh, and on the other hand, we, uh, uh, I've also done some experiments and I see that 99%, actually more than 99% of the threads that ever exited used only one page of the stack. So yes, we need more than uh, 8K, but uh, th th that's a small percentage. Uh, but even out of the, like, uh, the rest of the threads, like 99% actually use only one, uh, one page. Um, so I figured um, let let's just uh, make kernel stacks dynamic. Uh, and uh, th the same as with the user stack. So you handle a page fault, you increase uh, your um, stack when, when it needs to grow. Um, and uh, that was my uh, original proposal that uh, I sent as uh, RFC version one, and uh, it's link linked here. But uh, kernel stacks are not the same as uh, user stacks. So with the user stacks, we are guaranteed to always have the kernel stack. So like when we are handling the page fault, the page fault is handled on the kernel stack. With the kernel stack, it's different. And uh, I'll discuss about that later. But, um, so, but with my original proposal, the idea was that, um, uh, so we have uh, virtually mapped uh, stacks, we map stacks, that's very nice because that prevents the like uh, old stack overflow problems that uh, we had back in 2014 uh, when uh, all the stacks were direct mapped and uh, it was very hard to actually catch the uh, stack overflow problems. Uh, so 
uh, create a larger uh, uh, virtual map, say 32 kilobyte for each stack, and uh, start every thread with only four kilobyte. So if thread never uses more than that four kilobyte, as 99% uh, of the uh, threads uh, never do, uh, we actually win by uh, not having to uh, zero that memory when we allocate that memory. We, we win because uh, we use less memory, so it, it, it's uh, overall, good, overall good for the system. And uh, if we touch the new page, we just uh, fold it. Uh, yes? The, the claim you're saying 99% uh, using 4K uh, stack, I'm wondering how did you like find out? Yeah, so I, um, this, this is a good question. I submitted this like a small patch, uh, to, uh, like it's linked uh, at the bottom. Uh, it's basically uh, when, uh, so today we have uh, this way to figure out what was the maximum uh, stack ever used on the system. Uh, and uh, it, it uh, works by um, finding uh, when we have, um, uh, when we reach all zeros at the end of this, uh, and at the end of the stack. So every time a process exits, we look uh, for the place where like zeros start up to the end of the stack. And that means that like we never reach that uh, place. It's not uh, precise, but it's, it, it works. That's what we use uh, to figure out uh, what uh, was the, uh, like, the, the, what was the deepest stack that uh, we had in the system. I extended the, that functionality to actually have like a small histogram. So uh, each uh, process uh, increments a counter if it reached only the first page in its lifetime then we increment that counter. If it reached the second page, we increment that counter, and so on. So uh, Procvm stat has a histogram of what we reached. And 99% of threads only reached the first page, never second, third, and so on. Yeah, so um, there is, of course, uh, a problem of, uh, uh, like, if we decide to handle a page fault in kernel is to, uh, like uh, where do we get pages? So uh, like we can have a pre-CPU supply of uh, stack pages and if that uh, uh, supply is um, uh, repopulated like when the thread is leaving the CPU, then um, we, we should uh, have no problems in uh, guaranteeing that we actually can always uh, uh, successfully handle a uh, stack fault because stack fault can uh, can can happen in like in any area like including some critical area where we cannot take any logs. So uh, I added this dynamic stack fault function uh, to handle the uh, faults and then uh, added some accounting and um, finally uh, added the support to the x86 by uh, calling like by adding calls to the dynamic stack fault to the uh, current uh, do current address fault and exact double fault. And that exact double fault is actually the problematic. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it a little later. So uh, I verified it on uh, a number of uh, machines uh, on uh, various AMD and Intel machines. Uh, the, 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 like it shows some saving, like 75% saving, 72% savings, but um, uh, I really just booted those machines, just uh, verified uh, what is the, uh, the amount of uh, stack memory on base, the amount of stack memory on, um, uh, with the uh, dynamic kernel stacks. If we had uh, some workload on those machines, the savings would be much, much greater because, uh, again, every thread, every user thread uh, has an associated uh, kernel thread. Uh, and we have like uh, languages that make it very easy to create uh, user threads like uh, Go, Java. They so and we have some examples of workload where we have actually millions of threads on a single machine. So uh, the problem is double fault, and uh, double fault uh, occurs in a kernel because um, uh, a thread attempts to access unmapped. Uh, page in its stack, uh, which triggers a fault. But then uh, to handle the fault, we save the registers of the CPU state 
to the stack, and the stack, like we don't have the stack, so we have double fault. Uh, so uh, we, end, uh, when we end up in exact double fault, uh, which is fine because it has its own stack, ADT, which is always there. So I figured like we can just uh, use that, uh, handle the fault, and return and continue executing. But uh, apparently double fault is an abort path. We cannot do that. It's uh, not allowed by Intel. Even though we do return from exact double fault for some cases which are, but they're very, very, um, like the, the, I think there is maybe like one or two cases where we return and uh, they are basically uh, hardware, like I I issues workarounds, like, and uh, they're blessed by Intel that they're safe to, to be used. And we cannot use for anything else. So that's the, that's the problem. That's, uh, so, um, because of that, there were a number of discussions about, uh, like, suggestions of what can we do, how can we do the dynamic stacks. And uh, some suggestions included um, every time a thread uh, enters into the kernel, uh, let's uh, map empty pages to it, and when it leaves, if it never used those pages, we can unmap that. Uh, it sounds expensive, but uh, it's actually just a few more loads, but it's still expensive. <laughs> so uh, another one was like similar to that, but actually uh, on off CPU, which actually um, maybe even more expensive. Uh, it, it depends on the workload. Uh, and uh, then, um, so Matthew is not here, but uh, Matthew suggested, uh, uh, how about we just uh, add a new call expense stack? So like if uh, uh, driver author knows that uh, like their driver is uh, like might have very deep stack let's uh, l let's expand stack just on those threads uh, and uh, leave all the other threads uh, uh, the same so it's not ideal because it's not saving the memory uh, like in in my uh, original like what I originally tried to do but at least it solves the problem of um, so if we have some GPU or uh, KVM vCPU drivers, which might have like very deep stacks, they can explicitly uh, set a deeper stack for uh, for their threads. So uh, here I have uh, several uh, proposals, and uh, th this is basically what I'd like to discuss uh, today about. So the first one is uh, basically uh, uh, like. Uh, is what Matthew suggested, to, to do this opt-in. So basically, uh, we, uh, if the driver maintainer, driver author knows that uh, their stacks uh, are deep, uh, do the expansion uh, uh, explicitly there. Uh, the second suggestion is um, to use the uh, kernel hardening. Uh, so we, we have this um, uh, feature in uh, like a st called stack leak. And um, stack leak, it prevents uh, uh, leaking um, uh, kernel information from one system call to another system call uh, by erasing all the um, stack memory every time we leave uh, from kernel to the user land. And uh, the nice thing about this stack leak is that it uses the G uh, uh, GCC, not GC, uh, GCC plugin to, uh, to track uh, the, the current stack size by um, inserting these uh, callbacks at the, at the entry of every function, like every large frame function. So uh, the size of that function is set by config, so it could be 100 bytes or, like, uh, or 80 bytes, doesn't matter. And uh, when we enter the function, we check uh, where, uh, where our SP is, and um, uh, if it's bigger than uh, the maximum we ever reached, we save it in the thread info. So I figured we, we can reuse this to actually to, to estimate when we are about to get stack overflow. So if we, uh, at the entry of every function, if we check that we are within the config frame warn, so we know that no function frame is bigger than uh, frame warn, then uh, we can actually expand our uh, s stack at that time. 
And um, it's very safe to do. It's, there, there is no uh, fault handling. So we can just do that. And uh, I tested on our machines with, um, again, starting with 4K stacks. Things seem to be working fine. But uh, I wouldn't, work, uh, I wouldn't use it in production uh, because of some performance implication. Uh, uh, but those performance applications are associated with, the, with having these extra callbacks at the, uh, every, at the entry of every large function. Yeah. I think you mentioned that like most, most stacks are 4 kilobyte and we allow for 8 kilobyte right now. Would it make sense to opportunistically check at certain points if we're at the second page already? So if we crossed from 4 to 8 kilobyte and just allocate an additional page? Meaning so, that, so that you don't catch like the, the right, like what, what you, meaning like we insert at more points, we just add checks like did, did we cross, I don't know, 4 kilobytes? So we're just going to add like not at yet another one, meaning like you always prepare early for a worst case to happen. So as long as you're under four kilobyte, you wouldn't do anything. But once you realize at some point, oh, I crossed from four to eight, let's add yet, yet another page. So this kernel hardening uh, that uh, I'm talking about is exactly that. Uh, it, but it inserts those points automatically at, uh, at, the, at the beginning of... Uh, functions of a specific frame size. Uh, OK, so it does it already opportunistically, yes. not for each. OK, cool. Right, so every time we are about to enter a function that is larger than, say, 100 bytes, we check if our SP is, uh, is within the frame worn. And frame worn is the maximum uh, frame we can have. Uh, so, and uh, it's done very efficiently. So there is no single load to do that check because we, we just check the alignment of SP uh, with the uh, frame worn. And um, so it's just uh, all like uh, uh, register access and some ar arithmetics. It's, uh, it's, it's very efficient. Uh, but, uh, but, but still, I mean, it, it means that we have this um, uh, ex extra checks. So, yes, and, uh, and, and finally, the, the third is the full support. But uh, again, it, uh, we cannot do that, unfortunately, on regular x86-64. But apparently, we can do that on thread. Uh, and uh, that is because um, that... Uh, there is a switch to a different um, uh, stack, like uh, when we do the fault handling with thread. But uh, again, I haven't really studied the thread code, so I uh, I haven't verified this. Uh, I believe that ARM64 might also be able to support it. So, uh, but, but the idea is that since we we will have this uh, stack opt-in functionality the auto grow support. Uh, we can also have this dynamic stack fault function that can be used by any architecture that can actually handle kernel faults uh, correctly. So if there are, um, that's it. Uh, if there are any questions, suggestions of what can we do to, to basically harden kernel and to save memory. Uh, the first option seems rather uh, hard, hard to, uh, yeah, whack a mole approach. Uh, I'm not really sure about that because uh, if you just do not expand, then without the the second option, you just panic, right? So, uh, so uh, the first, uh, if you overflow because you didn't anticipate such a large, for example, memory reclaim. Direct memory reclaim tends to be really deep in yes, the state, yes. and that can happen from any path from the kernel. That, that is correct. Yes. So if, if the memory reclaim should be doing, or direct memory reclaim should be doing dy dynamic stack expand, then it's too late. You might be out no, of memory. We, we cannot so, do. Yeah, we cannot do that. In uh, yes. But I that's one of that. those paths that is really hard to anticipate. So essentially, that would have to happen in any allocation. So the way I was thinking about uh, the first option is that um, uh, that uh, regular like core kernel code should uh, all uh, run 
uh, within the like default kernel stack. Like so, so like today it's 16 kilobyte. But if um, like an author of a particular uh, driver uh, knows that their driver adds some like very heavy uh, stack usage. They can expand specifically for uh, for their threads. Yeah, I don't understand that. That just means that anytime you call malloc whatever, then you are in that territory because uh, that's a deep stack, uh, and it also re resembles confiscat kind of game where you just expect to be running too long and you don't want to blow blow up on on the soft lockups. Then you just have to annotate for that and. And there is a general conclusion or agreement that we should get rid of that. So I, I don't think that this is a really good way to go forward. But I like the, the second option. I It's the first time I'm hearing about that. So how does that work again? Uh, did you get some? One yeah. this point. So in, most of driver developers will think the driver is important enough to have large stacks. It's <laughs> not a question. <laughs> And, and really, it's not on, only about those drivers. It's a tough job, right? Yeah. Uh, but the, the second option, so I've just tried to look into the code and I couldn't understand that in, in a couple of minutes. So, yeah. uh, but can you tell more about that? What kind of overhead does it, this come up with? Because. Yeah. So, it has uh, basically two configuration options. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, one option, it uh, sets the limit for the uh, frame size at, at which we want to add this extra check. So uh, every function that uh, is bigger than uh, the frame size that is set by that config option uh, gets the callback into this stack leak handling. And, um, uh, and I thought that uh, that functionality is very useful for this purpose and uh, like in, in, in my um, branch I actually refactor it to be more generic to because I don't want to depend on stack leak because stack leak itself by itself is actually quite uh, uh, expensive so instead uh, at the entry of every large function we uh, check uh, if um, SP like our cur like current SP plus the config framework is still aligned to a page or it actually flips to the next page and if it, if, if it is still aligned to a page, it means that uh, we, we are not close to uh, Stack Overflow and we don't have to do the auto grow. But if it, uh, 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 if it uh, actually overflows to the next page, then we I increase our st stack size at that time. I don't think that I have a full picture, but uh, it's a cooperation uh, between the compiler that knows. Uh, it's a cooperation with the compiler, yes. So G uh, GCC has this plugin functionality that um, uh, like inserts those uh, entries at, uh, like for every function. So and actually even for assembly functions as well, not only for the C functions. And not only to the functions, but also. Uh, a alloc function, but I don't think we use any a alloc in our uh, kernel source code. At least I searched, I didn't find any like uh, calls to allocate stack directly from like f from within the function. But that also means if you call many smaller functions, you might not trigger the code. Th that is correct. That that is exactly the problem uh, mm -hmm. with this approach. So uh, it, that's why it's more like a. It, it cannot be used to rely unless we set uh, set uh, uh, the frame to be one byte. We cannot reliably to uh, uh, to replace it with the real uh, stack fault handling. So it's th th that's why for me it's more of a kernel hardening feature. So uh, we have uh, six, like we, we we will keep using 16 kilobyte stacks. But at least um, most of the times, if we have like a random stack overflow, the system won't panic. It will actually, uh, um, uh, we will uh, increase the stack uh, for, like in, in that event. If we had some like very deep uh, reclaim with uh, some uh, BPF attached and some, again, like some performance event handling and uh, all of that added together and we for some reasons overflow the 16 kilobyte, most likely we had uh, some large function that actually caused that uh, overflow. Um, it, would it, it, would, it would also not be possible to, for example, protect 
one page of the stack read only and then catch the fault because you would also again be in the double fault scenario, would you? <laughs> I'm well, not we could make a fault before we we could make we can make a fault still having memory backing it if we didn't have the like the, the VMA was shortened by by a K even though we had a 4K page there so we we right we could do that something like that uh, can, can you please so so the way that the when we when we fault we the VMA that the stack is in is we've gone beyond the VMA end, right? And, and so we need... No, no, VMA, yeah, VMA is large. Oh, the kernel stack. Yeah. VMA, VMA is just partially populated. So we have, uh, say, uh, one page or two pages within the VMA that is populated, but VMA itself, say, 32 kilobyte or 64 kilobyte, like, it's, it's different from... Uh, right, right, so it's not backed. Yes, that's right. Okay, th thanks. N now I understand where, where we stand, so... Um, Two on its own is not really reliable uh, because uh, it only can catch large functions. It cannot catch many small functions. Uh, th that's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we decided at the compile time the size of the function that we want to catch. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have many small functions, most likely we have like infinite recursion happening. No, no, that that's just not the case. Just. Just have a look how the memory allocation with a direct reclaim I, can go no, really no, I, deep. I, 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 know, I know, I know. None I, of them is really large on its own, but uh, all of them combined is something that has forced XFS to uh, go to the I, defer to I still, kernel threats. I still suspect that, uh, yes, they're not large, but uh, the reason why we get uh, deep in the stack because... Uh, uh, their stack frames have to add up to be like uh, add up to be like more than a page. So, the, like at least some of those functions have to be like very large. It really depends where you start. You you might yeah. be allocating just close to your page boundary, uh, and then you even don't have to go deep I, into I, shakers. I agree. I, I, I agree. So, but um, so as a kernel hardening feature that might help some I'll, people. What happens, or how expensive is it to do it at every function, not just large functions? I haven't measured this. This is a good question, but I haven't measured Because, I mean, it sounds like you just, it's like a masking of the, uh, you just mask the uh, uh, the stack pointer, and if it's that, that's uh, if it sets, then you just jump to a thing to do this. It sounds like it shouldn't be too expensive. It, it's, I mean, it, it adds up because of it happens at every single function, but uh, I, um, but I haven't, uh, I, yeah, I haven't checked the performance. It's not a function. The function call probably, yeah, the function call itself is probably much more expensive than a check of a, I mean, a mask of the stack pointer is really, yeah, sorry. The mask of the stack pointer is really, really quick. I mean, it's just a test and continue. And then you, if, when it goes over, you jump to the... Uh, that is correct, yes. We do not mispredict. We always uh, get... Uh, uh, it's just a math operation, so it's... Uh, it should be efficient, but uh, I, I haven't measured the performance. So, it's, so essentially what you're saying is that uh, you just uh, hook into uh, function entry, uh, F-trace function entry, check where you are, and uh, if you are close by, then just extend at that point. Would that work? Uh, it would work, but that would be expensive. No, you don't want to do the F-trace entry in there. It, I mean, I'm looking at like the ARM code. ARM ad adds like extra... Um, uh, no ops and stuff in front of the thing. So I'm saying Spark if you just have, well. a, yeah, if you like, if you have a uh, just, it's just a check at the very entry where F trace entry would be. You have a check to see how big, how close you are. If you're at, you know, if you hit the stack, sorry, the stack frame has um, so many bits set. You say, okay, now we're getting close to the end of the stack. Let's jump to like half the stack. You'll know it. once you get to half the stack, then you can say, hey, we. Had I think that's. Uh once we get within this uh, frame worm, it means that uh, the next function can be la larger, like can cause the overflow. I mean, if we had a clean build, it's guaranteed that no function is larger than uh, this frame worm. Yeah, I'm mostly asking about uh, F trace entry because that, if that would be a po possible way, then you do not have to change the kernel. You just have to use a. Uh, 
would it be? I mean, if in most cases, it would be just a check for... Uh, uh, If you are saving petabyte of data of uh, your memory, then it's probably worth that uh, function call. Okay, so but every a function call and every function call that's that is expensive. When I first created F trace, I just put a I had the very first function just call return and then ran hackbench, and that increased the hackbench overhead by thirteen percent. Just clarifying question again, and uh, the double fault happens when you want to push something onto the stack to, during which scenario? Uh, on the, on the, but yeah, the, yeah, so when, when we're handling uh, uh, a stack page fault in user land, yeah. we, um, uh, we access unmapped page, we, we have, like we, we, we start handling fault, and we save the CPU state to the kernel stack. And that's already where you would double faults. So there is but no way. No, so I'm, I'm just thinking no, no, if no, there's no, no, some. No, no. No? Uh, that's when we're handling the, the user stacks. And we mm. have kernel stacks available, so there are, there are no problems with that. But we cannot do the same thing for the kernel stacks, because uh, the, like we are handling the uh, fault of a kernel stack. We save the CPU uh, state. Uh, we try to stay, uh, save the CPU state to the uh, stack itself, and we don't have stacks, so we end up in double fault, which has its own uh, uh, IDT uh, stack. I'm just wondering if there wouldn't be a way that you allocate a page and you mark it read only, and right at the entry of before you try to push anything onto the kernel stack you would realize that it's read-only, you're going to mark it read-write, and then you can do whatever you want. And you know that you just ran into your, into your that's, last page. That, that's the same thing, because we would have, like, uh, we would end up in, uh, uh, in double fold because of trying to... Yeah, the question is, if you, if you can somehow just, like, page. change it, read, if you could detect that and change it read-write read without pushing anything to the stack. I, I'm not sure if that would work. Um, I'm not an x86 uh, expert, but from uh, from what I understood from that discussion that happened, and it's really educa educational to, to do that reading, uh, is that there are cases where this is really extremely hard to, uh, to handle. So in most cases, you can handle that in double fold handler, but uh, then you might be in the middle of schedule, and then what? And there are other potential corner cases, so uh, I guess the, the main message from that discussion was that it's probably possible, but it's just too risky because uh, there is so much, corn, so many corner cases that you could hit that um, it, it so would be really hard. The, the, the way I see that it would be like possible on the current x86 hardware if we uh, use the like IDT stack in the kernel stack. Like when we are executing in kernel mode, we use the IDT stack. And, and that's not uh, going to work because um, uh, we also handle uh, user faults in the kernel mode as well. So we can do some uh, copy to user, uh, copy from user or whatever, and uh, end up ha like handling the user fault. And uh, that should be ha uh, happening on the uh, like r regular kernel kernel stack, not on the IDT. So I, I was thinking about that, and, and it's not going to work. And uh, um, and as you said, like the, uh, yes. Um, the double fold have some like very uh, nasty rest conditions that uh, un unless guaranteed uh, by the um, by, by some like uh, by cheap vendors that uh, they, they cannot happen like should not be used uh, to to handle like the regular software workflow so it should only be handled uh, it should only be used for like uh, the specific har har hardware problems. Yeah, I think we're all over time. So oh, okay. Have some no, that's all. So thank you for the discussion. Uh, I um, so from what I understand, two and th uh, two and three, uh, I can propose one uh, is not liked very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.